my little butterflies and if you are watching this it should be august 11th and if it is august 11th it is my second booktube birthday oh you guys oh my god you guys oh my god like i can't even it doesn't even feel like i've been doing booktube for two years I feel like I just started like yesterday. Like it doesn't even feel like this is something that I've been doing. And I'm just so proud of myself that I actually stuck with this for two years. Like you know, you guys know how many times I could have quit. Like with anybody, you know how many times you could just stop making videos or whatever. But this has really become a part of my life. Like I can't even believe this. I didn't even think that this would be something that I would be doing long term. And I know two years to some people might not be long term because there are people on book two that have been on book two for eight years and four years. But two years is a long time to me. I'm just so proud of myself. Like I have just grown so much in these two years. Like just just my videos itself. If you go back and look at my not my very, very first video. You don't have to go that far because I do have like maybe four or five videos like that I first started when it was supposed to just be a porridge channel and then I stopped doing it for like a year or so and I started doing booktube but anyway if you go back to that first booktube video and what I'm doing now the first booktube video I ever did was vlog style so it was like moving and the camera was shaky to now even I know I can still you know do better with my videos I, can, I still have a lot of room to grow but from then to now, I'm like so much better. I'm making eye contact with the camera. I don't feel weird talking to the camera like I'm, you know, talking to myself. I don't feel weird doing it at all. I'm more comfortable than what I was before. I'm more of myself, like more out of my shell than what I was when I first doing it. It's just, I have grown so much. And like, do you guys ever go back and look at like your old videos from the beginning? I do that all the time. And I have to just sit there and like laugh at myself. I love going back and looking at my old book hauls and my old book reviews and just my old videos videos in general it's just fun to me to look at where I came from and what I used to be like you know and uh, nervous in front of the camera and it's just I'm so much better like I'm not nervous in front of the camera anymore I'm more of I don't film when my fiance is home I'm not yet ready to film while he's home yet because I know he's gonna tease me at least that's what I think he's gonna do he might not but I tell him that all the time he always asks why I don't film when he's at home I'm like because I don't feel very awkward. So I always wait till he go to work <laughs> to film. I'm just not ready to film with him at home yet. Maybe if I get my own like room to film in in the future, then maybe I'll film with him at home. But not yet. Like I can't do it. And he always asks me when I'm gonna put him in one of my videos. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I'll do like, you know, like a fiance, husband, boyfriend tag and you know you could be in my video. But I'm not ready for that yet because I feel like I'm gonna be awkward all over again in front of the camera with him here. But this is my second booktube birthday this is my second year you know actively being a booktuber i actually wanted to do a video giving tips on you know how to start your own booktube channel the unprofessional pain of course since you know i haven't been here nearly as long as other people that do this kind of video but i just wanted to give you guys my standpoint since i haven't been here as long so that's why i say it's my unprofessional um, opinions on what you can do if you really want to start a booktube video just a few tips I don't know how long this video is gonna go it's probably won't be as long but you know I rant so it might turn into a lengthy video but the first thing that I really want to get into about if you really want to start a booktube channel is don't think about it just do it like if you sit there and you think too much about it because I do this a lot with a lot of things if you think too much about it you're gonna end up not making one and not starting one. If when you're doing it, you need to just let's make a video. You know, since it's on your mind, if that's something that you really been thinking about, that oh I should do this, and you know you actively watch booktube and that's something I should do, or just with any kind of you know YouTube channel in general, is that something that you want to do? That's what you're into. That's what you think you want to try out. Then just do it because if you take too long, you you have your mindset now, and then you want to take a few days to think it over. You're going to end up turning into what? Well, I really want to do it, but this and but that, and I'm not going to have time. It's all the everything, all the negative things you could possibly think of is going to come up and make you decide not to do it. So just do it. The second thing I want to say is it's okay if you don't have a camera. And I know a lot of people use this as an excuse for why they don't, you know, make videos or, you know, why they don't start their channels because they don't have a camera. It's okay. You don't need a fancy camera to a digital camera to you know a uh, camcorder to make a video you can use the camera on your phone a lot of people on booktube use their phone to film 
my camera isn't that good on my phone, so that's not me. I have an Android, okay? But a lot, I mean, a lot of people, iPhones use their camera on their iPhone to film. And, I mean, if you have a computer, which I would hope you have the computer, if, well, I don't know. I, I, I just think it's a lot of people that have computers these days. It's like, if you don't have a computer, you're like the very low percentile of that. But nine times out of ten, if you have a computer, you have a webcam. So use your webcam, and a lot of people do webcam videos when they first start off. Some of my, like, very old videos before I was officially booktube videos or webcam videos in the computer that I had, they weren't very good. I think it was really the room that I was in when I was filming it, but the old computer I had didn't really have a good webcam. But, you know, you don't need a digital camera to walk around with. You know, you can use your webcam. A lot of people use webcams and webcam videos don't. A lot of them turn out really good, so you don't need a camera to do it. So don't let that hold you back thinking you need a camera. And if you have a camera, then great. You don't need a fucking nine hundred dollar camera to start videos. If you have a little, um, hold on. If you have a little, just a, a little digital camera like this, that is fine. And this is what I first started filming with. Like my first couple months on BookTube, I was filming with this until I got the camera that I'm filming on now. Um, I got that for that Christmas right after I started my after I started my um, channel because my fiance used to buy me a camera every year if you have a camera like this this is perfect you know your video is still gonna come out looking great it's okay you know you don't need a $800 $900 $1,000 camera to film a video it's okay the third thing I want to say is you don't need special equipment to start a book two channel what I and when I, what I mean by when I say special equipment is, one, you don't need a tripod stand if you want to start, you know, making videos. And I know a lot of people are probably like, yes, you do. It's going to hold my camera. Well, look, when I first started filming, I didn't have a, I just got my tripod stand in like February, March. And I've been on BookTube for two years. You don't always need a tripod stand. That's something nice to get, you know. If you want to get one, then that's cool because they have cheap ones. This one was on, I think, $19. It's okay. You know, if you want to get one, that's fine. If you can't afford to get one yet, then that's fine too. When I first started doing BookTube with my camera, I used my dresser that I had when I was living in my mom's house. I used to film in my room. I put my camera right on top of my dresser. I had a tall dresser right in front of my bed. I put the camera on there and I filmed, I, you know. My first, like, two videos, I don't know why I decided to hold it and it just didn't pop into my mind. Hey, stupid, sit it on the dresser. But, like, my first two or official book two videos, I was holding it. You can hold it. If, you know, people just gonna have to get to use the fact that, you know, it might not be, you know, doing a vlog style might not be the most still video, but your content is great, right? What you're talking about is meaningful. And then when I moved into my own apartment, I still didn't have a tripod stand and I wasn't filming in my room anymore. I started using this little, um, like, dinner tray kind of thing that <laughs> me and my fiance had before we got a table. Like, you know, like, the fold-up dinner trays that you can, you know, put up and take out and unfold. I used that until, like, February, March this year to film. So, you don't always freaking need, like, expensive equipment. Another thing is, like, equipment-wise, you don't need professional lighting to film. I don't have professional lighting yet. I want to get it though just for when it gets dark because it, it'll look better because you could tell some of my videos that I wait later to film it's very dark or I have to turn the light on and it's very yellowy and that doesn't always look good but I'm using natural lighting right now I when I moved to, put, to my new apartment even though I'm standing in my mom's house I filmed in front of a, 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 a right next to a window because at my mom's house my bed was right next to a window so that worked out fine and even um, when I moved into my first apartment I actually set my bookshelf right next to the window and I would sit right in front of the window and film just like I do now I, I use natural sunlight and if you film early in the day that's perfect just you know open your blinds up so you don't have like those lines going across your face and so you don't have to have professional lighting they also have if you want to get professional lighting there are cheap professional lighting I saw the cheapest I saw was like $29.99 $39.99 on Amazon I want to get one just for when I decide to film late at night I don't have to be worried about my video looking yellowy. So, that's the only reason I really want to get it now. And, you know, like I said, um, when I was talking about tip number two, I used to hold my camera. So, if you can hold it, then hold it. That's perfect. You don't need equipment. Don't think, oh, I, got, I have to buy all this equipment to start filming. You don't. Just start it. And my fourth thing I want to talk about is you don't necessarily need to edit when you first start. And 
I say this because you're just starting out, so you're trying to really decide if this is something that you're going to keep up with for a while. So you don't want to put money into something that you're not 100% sure you're going to stick with because then you're going to be left with the stuff that you'll never use again that you already paid your money for. Um, you can always try filming in one take and do, do, you know, different takes, you know, and just get your thoughts together so you don't have to keep editing out ums and, you know, these silent moments and... You know, it's, it's okay. And when I first started filming, I didn't edit. So, I, there were times where I had to, like, start over filming, like, two or three times <laughs> to get it right. Because my little brother would walk into the room and mess up my take. And then I'm like, get out while I'm filming. So, I would have to start all over again. Or I would get to this point where I forgot what I was going to say. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, you know, for, like, five minutes. And I'm like, yeah, I got to get rid of this video. Okay. I didn't use any editing then, um, but if you feel like you have to edit, like absolutely have to, there are a lot of free editing software that you can use. For one is there's the YouTube editor that you can, you know, upload your videos straight to YouTube and you can use their edit editing, you know, whatever thing that you could, after you upload it, it'll let you edit it before you publish it. So that's something you can do. Or if you have a app, if you're part of the Apple family, there's iMovie. I hear that it comes on the iPhone too. I didn't know it came on the iPhone. I know it came on the MacBooks, but I didn't know that it came on the iPhone. So iMovie is something you can use. And I know that's fun to use because I've used it in school. My school had uh, MacBooks, so I know that's fun to use when you're editing something. So, and it's easy and simple. So you can use iMovie or if you're like me and you're part of the PC family, there's Windows Movie Maker you can use that's free now. Windows Movie Maker, it's free, but it's not the best thing to edit with. Like, it, it, like as you can see, my videos are okay as it is. But, like, I mean, when I say it's okay to edit with, I mean, you can't do any of the fancy stuff with it. Like, you can't overlay pictures, so I always have to, like, cut to another slide if I want to put a picture in. You can't overlay videos, so, like, that's what I mean. It doesn't do any fancy stuff. It's very basic. It gets you from point A to point Z where you can cut out your um moments and your lost moments that's that that's perfect to me you know that's all i really need i want something to where i can overlay which i did get something which i can overlay but i got kind of frustrated with it because i couldn't figure out how to you know actually do it because it's something very different from windows movie maker so i'm learning something new but it's not really something i use yet and i'm kind of upset that i spent my money for it you know but i'm still you know practicing with it so i haven't technically professionally officially used it in the video yet so you guys haven't seen that it wouldn't be edited that yet but yeah there's always you know some free stuff you can always just type in the google free editing software and you know see what comes up and see if that's something that you want to use because there are free stuff it's just the fact that you're sitting there learning how to use it that's all and then later when you're more comfortable with you know sitting in front of the camera and you've decided that this is something that you're going to do that you're going to keep up doing then you can spend money on you know the final cup pro and the um the adobe editors and stuff you know you can spend money on that kind of stuff once you read once you you know start firming your decision that that's something you're going to stick with so that way you don't feel like you're wasting your money for something you're not going to continue doing the fifth thing is you don't have to have a whole library in your house or read 10 20 books a month to do a booktube channel you don't because i don't read 10 20 books a month yes there are those booktubers that read like that they read like four and five books a week but they can do that. Everybody's reading pace is different. I average four books a month. But, you know, the last two months I've been hitting five, which is great. But you're going to find your average. If you only read two books a month, then that's great. That's just your two books a month that you'll be able to talk to and tell people about. You don't always have to read a book load. You don't have to have a whole library in your house. I haven't always had this bookshelf. And this is nothing compared to some of the booktubers on here that have, you know, like four or five different bookshelves. I only have one and it's not even full yet. I'm on my I'm, I'm on my last shelf and that's halfway full. So I'm not even full yet. When I first started out, I didn't even have this bookshelf. I had a little three shelf bookshelf that I use as my nightstand now. And I didn't even have that full. <laughs> so when I first started out. You know, I was a library junkie before I, you know, actually started spending my money on books and actually saying I want to keep this. I want to, you know, become a book hoarder and put it on my shelf. So you don't need to feel like you need to have, you don't even need to have a bookshelf to film in, in front of, period. You can film in front of a blank wall if you want to. It doesn't matter as long as, you know, you're, you're okay with how you're filming things. You don't have to have a bookshelf. Don't feel like because you see a lot of booktubers filming a book in front of a bookshelf, you have to. I mean, when you get one, that's fine. But if that's what you want to do, but you don't have to. You know, a lot of people, 
you know, there are a couple of booktubers that don't film in, their, in front of their bookshelves all the time, so it's okay. Don't feel like because you don't have a bookshelf, you don't have a whole library in your house, that means you don't have anything to talk about because that's the purpose of going to a library or, you know, you have a Kindle. Whatever you have that you read your books on every month, that is what you talk about. You know, you don't have to have the physical books in your hand. You don't have to have it to be your own copy of a book. It's okay if you just go to libraries. It's okay. I still go to libraries, just not as much as I used to. But I still go to libraries. And don't feel like if you only read a book or two a month, that means you're not going to have any videos to post. If you only read two books a month, then that's then that's like four videos right there because you had a TBR if you decide to because a lot of people don't do TBRs anymore because they don't feel like they should have a set schedule but I still like to do TBRs just so I can you know kind of think about what I want to read that doesn't mean I have to stick to that because later on throughout the month if I want to read something else then I will but that's just something that way I know okay Kim this is what you want to read at the beginning of the month so you have a TBR video you have at least two review videos if you decide to do review videos well I recommend you do review videos because I mean that's a good way to tell your subscribers, the people that actually, you know, want to listen to you and care about your opinion, why they should get this book that you love so much or why they shouldn't get this book that you hated so much. You know, tell them your pros and your cons of the book. So you have at least two review videos and you have a wrap up. That's four videos right there so you can talk about the books that you read all together as a whole. And also, you also have to think about the fact that there are tag videos you can also do throughout the month. So your channel doesn't have to always be... TBR review wrap up TBR review wrap up you can do tags and they don't always have to be book related so just think about that my sixth thing is you do not have to post a video every day or you don't have to post two or three videos a day I mean if you have the time like that because I know there are some younger booktubers in the booktube community you know if you don't work and all you do is go home and go to school then that's perfect you have time for that but some of us have jobs have bills to pay and we can't do that every day so I mean don't feel like you have to film every day get yourself a schedule you know make yourself a schedule that doesn't mean you have to always film on that same day every week or upload on that same day every week just the fact that you're committing to um, well I'm gonna upload once a week or I'm gonna upload twice a week it doesn't always have to be on the same day you know cuz I know I don't film on the same day every week I just film like I said whenever my fiance go to work I film and that's not all the time because see another thing is pre-recording videos are going to save your life like i pre-record videos all the time if i sit down and film a video i'm filming at least two or three videos that day i'm never just doing one video unless it's getting really really dark and i know the rest of the video videos aren't going to come out correctly don't be afraid to pre-record your videos if you want to pre-record four videos in a day then do that you have to do what's best for you. No one's going to judge you because you have to run the same thing on in four videos. Nobody cares. It's just the fact that you have the video up. You know, it's the fact that you didn't go MIA for three or four weeks. If you feel like you're not going to have time in the coming weeks to film another video, you have to look at your timeline. If I sit down and film today and I know I'm working the next four days in a row and I'm not going to feel like filming before I go to work or after I get off, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to pre-record some videos that's going to last me until the next day I'm off and I can sit down and film a video. You know, you just have to look at your situation. So, I, I know a lot of booktubers pre-record videos, they just change their clothes. I, I'm not doing that. That's too much work. I'm not going to sit here and do a video, go change my shirt, and then sit back down, and then go change the shirt again. And I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. You get it how, you're going to get it how I give it to you. If you don't like it, then deuces, you know. It's okay, pre-recording videos, especially if you're in school and you have a busy schedule. Say you come up to, like, you know, like your finals week. You're not going to have time to sit down and film um, every day and, and, you know, keep up with a two two videos a week post and schedule like that. Because you're going to want to study. You have tests. You're mentally going to be drained. So you want to pre-record and have that out the way ahead of time because you don't want to miss it for two or three weeks without a video. I committed to myself that I'm going to post at least every two days. And that depends on how many videos I pre-record at a time. Like today I'm going to do two, but I still have one more on my camera. And this one isn't going to be posted until the 11th. So I'm just, you know, spacing it out. But I'm just going to do two videos today. That way I don't have too many videos piled up on my camera. And I have an oopsie moment and delete the video. Because that has happened before. So I commit to two days. Every two days I, I post a video. Some days, three days, whatever. But I always make sure I'm posting at least twice in that week. Or one, at least once a week. And I think if you're just starting out, you should at least commit to posting once a week. Because at least that you notice that you have at least four videos up that month. The seventh thing that I want to get to, I think this is the second to last thing I wanted to talk about. Get creative when you're doing your videos. You know, 
I call them seat fillers. Have some seat fillers to fill out the rest of your month. If you're going to do like one video a week, and that means that's only four videos you post in a month, or if you feel like you're getting bored, you don't want to do a TBR anymore, or you just want to put up another video but you don't know what to do it on, that is where your seat filler comes in. That can be a tag video that you've been wanting to do. Some people do Friday reads. That can be a Friday's read video. Um, I do my current reading concoctions is what I call it and that's just basically what I'm currently reading. I do Caterpillar Corner with Kalea where I talk about what books I've been reading to her. I do real talk videos that is like really non-book related and that's just me talking about, you know, giving advice on things I've been through. You know, it's completely um, unbook related. Um, Olivia from um, I Live Here For Books, she does her book defacing videos which are amazing. You, try, you guys check it out. Her art is just beautiful. And um, Vanessa from Paper Fairy, she does um, her sewing videos that she does and she actually started another channel to do all of that on. She does those. Danny from Danny Darling does um, what's what's in my mailbox or what's in Danny's mailbox something like that but you see what I'm saying people come up with their own videos at seat fillers you can start your own series and that's what you do that's the video you're doing you don't can't think of any other book related videos to do or any other videos you can't think of to do that's what you do I have answered a bunch of tag videos that I have not done yet and that is what I do when I can't think of what to film let's do a tag video then. or I also do my portrait videos that's another thing I do but that I this is supposed to be my book size portrait channel, but as you can see, I don't do my portrait videos as often. That's really That really is a big seat filler for me. That's something I really do when I can't think of any other videos to do. Let me record a portrait video. You know, just do something that you like. Create your own seat filler. You know, if you sew, do sewing videos. If you do makeup, do a couple makeup videos. You do hair, do a couple hair videos. You know, just do something that you like. It, you know, expose us to something that you like because I swear I have never heard of book to face until I came across Olivia's channel and that was just like um, at first I was like what? I didn't know people did that. I didn't know that was a thing and I was like that is so amazing like I know I would never attempt to do something like that because it'll probably come out of mess and I don't want to ruin my books if it's going to come out of mess but hers are amazing so, you know, you don't have to follow BookTube's norms, you know, like TBR wrap up, review, tag, TBR wrap. You don't have to follow BookTube's normal regimen. Do your own thing. Do what you feel is right for your channel because at the end of the day, it's your channel. It's not my channel. It's not any other big BookTubers' channels. It's your channel. You don't have to do everything that they do. You just have to do what you feel like is right for your channel. That's going to make your channel stand out because at the end of the day, you want your channel to stand up. You don't want people to be like, well, her channel is just like this one's channel. They just like... You want to be different, you know, so do your own thing. What makes your channel feel right? What makes you feel comfortable on your channel? The last thing I want to talk about is thumbnails. Always make sure your thumbnail is on point. You want your thumbnail to actually depict what you're going to be talking about in the video. So if you're going to be filming on a blank wall, but you don't just take a picture smiling, you know, you want people to know that this is your thumbnail, that this is what this video is about without actually reading the title. Just imagine if your title wasn't there, you want people to look at the picture and know what the video is about. So, I mean, you don't always have to put words in the video, but I like to put words on my thumbnail so they can tell you, you know, like so if I do a book review, I'll put the title of the book as the title of my video, you know, like uh, Red Queen by Victoria AVR, and I will put spoiler free in the title. And then on my actual thumbnail picture, I will put book review. So, you know, hey, this is a book review and I take a, my thumbnail picture with the actual book in my hand. Or, you know, you just put a picture on it. So, I'm going to talk to you about thumbnails. First of all, you can use this amazing free app that I use to make my thumbnails. And that is pickmonkey.com. It's completely free. Okay, you can put the words in it. You can, you know, put your overlay pictures in it if that's what you want to do. Say you return a book to the library, you don't have it anymore. Put the overlay picture of it on your picture. That's your thumbnail. Boom. Done. Complete. So, how do you get to do your own custom thumbnails is, well, when you first start your channel on YouTube, you have to actually enable that feature. So, what you do is, the first thing you do is you go to my channel. So, click on the thing that says, my channel. And then you go to video manager, which is going to be somewhere like in that bar where your YouTube banner is. It's going to be somewhere either above that or below that, but it's going to be somewhere right there. You click video manager. And then in the left hand, no. YouTube channel for custom thumbnails and also your channel has to be in good standing for that and you will know if your channel is not in good standing YouTube 
let you know uh, we had to take too many videos down from your channel something you know something like that but as long as your channel it'll let you know when you click that label button it's going to send you exactly tell you exactly how to set everything up and you just follow the instructions and then you're going to be set and when you go to upload your next video at the bottom where it'll be uploading your thumbnails it's going to have another box that says custom thumbnail you click that and then you get to go through your pictures of, of you know whatever saved on your computer and that's going to be your custom thumbnail now that that long-winded explanation is out of the way, uh, I hope that was a good explanation and directions. Because I'm not usually great at giving directions, but I'm pretty sure I hit that one on the nail. Because I actually, when I was writing it down on how to do it, because I'm not going to tell people how to do it, I was going through the steps myself. So hopefully I did it right. But yeah, those are all the tips I wanted to really talk about. If you really want to start your own booktube channel, it's very easy. Just do it. You don't need to have anything but, you know, your webcam or your phone. You don't need to even have a camera if you don't have a, like, you know, if you don't have a digital camera, you don't need that. It's fine. Just start making videos with what you have. My camera angle might have changed a little because it cut off on me while I was filming. And I don't know how to stop that. I don't know if that's a setting or just something it does after so long. But it cut off while I was filming. It didn't beep or anything. And I thought I was done. And I went back to look at the video and the camera was off. And I just, I felt like that was happening, but I wasn't sure. I didn't even see the lens go back in. That's how bad it was. But anyway, I had one more thing I wanted to talk about, and this is directed to all my ladies out there that's trying to start a booktube channel. Don't feel like you have to beat your face to start your channel, okay? Don't feel like you have to make a big, a big makeup performance thing, you know, happen before you film your videos. You don't have to wear makeup in all your videos. You really don't because I don't. This is a half makeup face this is not even a whole all this was is lipstick and eyeshadow and let me tell you lipstick and mascara itself goes a very long way if you feel like you have to have to have to wear makeup see i don't always like to put a full face on just to film because i never feel like taking my makeup off so i don't ever want to really put on a full face just to do sit down for maybe 20 minutes to film a video i really don't so that's why i say makeup you don't feel it that's not a necessity in a video unless you just feel like you want to be made up and be but i mean look if you need to beat your face to feel comfortable then beat your face boo, -boo. beat your face beat it hard if that's what you need to do to feel comfortable in a video you know and if not you can be like me just be like whatever you can get a you can get a whole beat face one day you can get a half beat face another day and then you can get a no beat at all face so I mean, I'm working with a happy face today, and that is perfectly fine because it's going to be hard enough to make myself go take this off as it is. Just know you have to be comfortable in yourself. If you're not comfortable making videos without makeup on, then you know where your makeup. You have to be comfortable. I don't need you getting an anxiety attack on the camera because you don't feel beautiful in front of the camera. But look, do what you got to do to make yourself feel good, okay? That is all I wanted to talk about before this camera cuts off again. No, I want to say one more thing to my family and friends out there that is watching this video because apparently some of y'all watch my videos. Um, as I've heard. And y'all watching, press the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. Don't just watch it. Bring it up to the later when you see me. Subscribe and support my channel. Make my subscribe numbers go up since y'all watch my videos so diligently. And y'all want to bring it up to me and ask me questions. Subscribe to my channel. Thank you. And that is all I want to talk about today. So thank y'all for watching. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. Click the bell button. Click that notification bell. Click the bell button. Click the 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 you know, and don't forget to share my videos with people so you know they can see me and be like, oh, that's Kayla, I know her. Ooh, let me watch her videos and subscribe to her channel. Y'all know. So, yeah, thank y'all for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Is it too late?